when you left Rap City after seven years, what was that experience like after the last seven years of dominating hip hop and then saying, okay, it's time for me to walk away from this thing? Well, I'm glad, well, it's, it's mixed feelings. Um, I was doing radio in LA. I was doing the morning show with Big Boy at Power 106. And, um, you know, we were doing, shooting Rap City within doing the show. So it was a win-win for them. But what this was year six and a half, almost year seven for me. And what people don't realize is I was making more money as a dancer. I was making more money as a choreographer. And I was making more money as a radio personality than I was hosting and now segment producing Rap City. And so it came a point where my contract was up for negotiation. They didn't want to give me a raise. And so I had to make a decision for myself to either be like, do I stay in this abusive relationship or do I leave? Because that's really kind of what it is. And so, you know, Stephen Hill had just come over. We had never met, never had a conversation, but I guess they were kind of like, well, she don't want it. Then that's what it is. It's like, take it or leave it. And I think at that point I was just kind of like, yeah, it's time to go. Um, because at some point you have to stand for yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, Rhapsody obviously changed completely after that anyway you know mm -hmm. so but i ended up still having thank god an illustrious radio career which has been a blessing so exactly leaving television and making that pivot in the radio how much pressure did you feel when you were up under that contract negotiation and you was thinking okay i've been getting it in over here for a good little minute but i'm about to leave all of this work that i've been putting down behind and go in a whole new direction it's a tough, 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 tough decision. And I'm sure like somebody, even though my pennies compared to Dave Chappelle and him making that decision to walk away, but sometimes you just kind of have to decide how much abuse you're going to take. And, um, you know, I didn't, I've been auditioning for other TV shows and I, I know the right one is gonna come up again, but it was hard because one, I wasn't ready to retire from dance when Rap City came on. They were good to me the first two years because they, allowed me to shoot while I was touring in the cities that we were in. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was like, I had to make a decision. And I think for me, my body after having done gymnastics since the age of 10 and dancing was just like, okay, we can still choreograph. You just don't have to dance. And, I, and that was a hard decision too. So leaving radio, I mean, leaving TV just to go to radio was really, really hard. And I guess I didn't think at the time that I wasn't going to have another job right away. But mm -hmm. that was also at the time too, where there weren't all these diversity departments. Like I was trying to get on E for the longest time. And someone had said to me, so have you interviewed anybody who wasn't necessarily black or urban? You know, so then I like, even though I had Denzel on my reel, Oprah on my reel, all of the higher echelon, they're just looking at all of my hip hop stuff. So then I had to go out and get like Matt Damon and Alan Alt and all these other people. And then all of a sudden now here comes the diversity departments and stuff. And as great of an asset as that is now to have it, it's unfortunate that we need, that we have to have that, right? It's unfortunate that we have to have affirmative action and diversity departments because you should just have the whoever's best for the damn job, period, yeah. point blank, male, female, gay, straight, black, Latino, whatever. Um, and unfortunately the world doesn't work like that. So it was a cold reality once I left Rap City, like, damn, I'm not on TV anymore, you know? But radio was, was still so good to me. Um, I was in a major market and doing big things within the market that you know, it was, it was good. So being able to interview Oprah Winfrey, what was that like being able to talk to her? Um, well, I, she interviewed me. So, which was because of me dancing on the show, um, okay. on her, her show, and you can kind of go to YouTube and see it. So she had me on as a guest. Um, so I actually didn't get to sit down. I was only able to use that piece mm -hmm. of our conversation. Do I have a I'm trying to think, I don't think I have a red carpet moment with her, like a really quick press mm -hmm. conference kind of a thing. Um, and that's, that's still kind of mixed feelings too. I try not to, I'm trying to save it for the book and everything about what that was to meet her. Cause sometimes they say you should not meet your idols, right? Because you either love it or you kind of get disappointed. So I'm gonna just leave that there and I'm not gonna tell you which one I was. My God, I done been there and I know exactly what you're talking about right there. Right. Okay, now what about Denzel? Oh my gosh, I think this was for the preacher's wife I interviewed him for. And uh, I was nervous, mm -hmm. nervous, sweaty. And I, I don't ever really get shook. Like it's very rare that 
that I'm a tough chick and I don't ever really get shook. And I think I was like stumbling and stuttering over my words and just not focused and just like, and then he relaxed me and it was just like, okay, let me, let me just shake it off. You know what I mean? One of my most surprising, really good interviews is I got to interview Samuel L. Jackson and I'm doing all these press junkets for iHeart or something like that. So I'm using Leslie Seagar as my name. Mm -hmm. And so he comes in and, and I'm sitting in, you know, the room where you usually see the reporters sitting facing each other. And so he's already there and I come in and he's like, Leslie Seagar. And he's looking at me and he's like, wait a minute. Aren't you big Les? You that dancing, you rap city. What is this? Oh, you working for the white people now. Oh. <laughs> Leslie Seagar, you big Les. The fact that he even I almost tear, I almost cried, like you don't understand yeah. that. Because my mother would always say, like, you got to do your best because you never know who's watching, right? Mm -hmm. So you like, you think he's not watching music videos. He ain't watching Rap City, but he's, he's Sam Jackson. He's human. He loves hip hop, of course, you know? Exactly. So.